guys, welcome back to another Bible study Saturdays with Brother Gio. Today we'll be going over the rest of John chapter 3, um, verses 22 all the way to verse 36. Uh, to begin this video, we're going to start off with a prayer by me, uh, and then we're going to end off with a prayer by Brother Gio. Now, for all those people watching, just bow your head and close your eyes, and I'm about to pray. Father God, we thank you for this day that you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in that, God. Father God, you're holy, you're worthy, you're mighty, God. You are Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, who is my provider, God. I pray as in this time that we come together as writers to be able to discuss your scripture, God. I pray that you'll be able to give us an understanding, to be able to understand the scriptures to the fullest, God. I pray that you'll be able to point out key information to us so that we'll be able to learn more about your word and also piggyback off of each other and teach each other stuff at the same time, God. We pray that we use this time as a, a good time, a holy time to be able to come together as brothers, to be able to learn about you and be able to just talk as brothers, God. We love you and we thank you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. So last week we learned about Nicodemus. Yeah. I have all my notes that I wrote on, uh, John, on, that, on, that, on that half of the chapter. Nicodemus, right? Yeah. How can a man be born again? And you learned that John 3.16 was right there. For God so loved the world, right? <laughs> he was having this conversation with Nicodemus. And so we'll, we'll pick back up <clears throat> chapter 3, verse 22. All right. Um, so let's get right into it. It says, after these things came... Jesus and his disciples into the land of Judea. And there he tarried with them and baptized. And John also was baptizing in Enoch near to Salim, because there was much water there. And they came and were baptized, for John was not yet cast into prison. Then there arose a question between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purifying. And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, meaning teacher, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same baptizeth, and all men come to him. So pretty much John's disciples are asking, um, or just telling him about Jesus, like, this John, this is the person that you were always talking about that, you know, who is to come. And now he's out here doing the same thing that you're doing. He's baptizing people and people are coming to him just as they were coming to you before he came on earth. All right. Verse 27 says, John answered and said, a man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. Ye yourselves bear me witness that I said, I am not the Christ but that I am sent before him. So you see how John is continuously saying, listen, I'm not Jesus. I'm just a messenger of him. Um, so remember just a lot of people, remember how he said, just reminded you, you know, in the event that as ground productions takes off, remember you're just a messenger, right? You're not the main event. You're just a little guy on the totem pole. <laughs> And you're just doing some work for God because you love him and you want other people to love him, have that opportunity to get to know him and love him the same way you do. I think a lot of people get that twisted. Like you said, they forget that they're just the messenger. And they try to like lift themselves up and say like, you know what, I'm responsible for all of this. I'm responsible for this and that. I would never say that because most of the stuff that I see in my videos and all that knowledge I got, it's not for me. <laughs> God put all of that in my head and I'm just delivering it. Some stuff I research, but majority of the thing is just whatever God brings to my mind. So I can't really say this is all me because it's not me. <laughs> it's not me at all. It's all God. So, um, so verse 29, right? He says, he that hath the bride is the bridegroom. So now we're speaking in the parable again, you know, like that. All right, so it says, he that has the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom, which stands and hears him, rejoice greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. 
This my joy, therefore, is fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease. Tricky saying. Any idea what he's talking about? I'm, I'm confused over his 29. Right now. <laughs> I don't know why they talk like this. <laughs> like, say what you mean and mean what you say, right? Like, <laughs> So, he must uh, increase, I must decrease. Don't hurt yourself. Don't worry about it. It's all good. So listen, I, you just said what verse 30 says. You know what verse 30 says. You just said it. But I don't think you realize that you said it. Mm-hmm. I don't think you realize that he's saying what you said, but in a different way. So um, I, you even mentioned it in your prayer. Um, verse, so let's go to verse 29 first. It says, he that has the bride is the bridegroom. But the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, rejoices greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This my this my joy, therefore, is fulfilled. So, who's the bride? We are the church. The church is the bride. Okay. And who's the church? The people. Yep. Not the building. Not the location that, that the people go to. But the church is the people. Right, we are the church. We make up the body. Who's the bridegroom? AKA um husband or groom. Bible. Huh? The Bible. Uh Jesus? Jesus, yeah. But Jesus is the Bible. Jesus is the word. So that's why I was gonna kinda give you that. <laughs> All right, so I'm half correct. I'm half correct. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I give you half credit. Half credit. So he that it, he that has the bride is the bridegroom. So he, Jesus, that has the bride, the church, is the bridegroom. You still with me? Let me do that over again. Yeah, run that, run that back. <laughs> nah, it's just that why they just why they kind of use something else to explain that. So many similes, so many metaphors, so many parables, so many stories. It's just so okay. So the church is the people. Church are the people, yeah. Which is the he said the bridegroom or the whatever what they call it? The right. bride. It comes a bride, right? And the bridegroom is like Jesus. Bridegroom, consider the bridegroom as another word as, as the husband to be. Oh yeah, the husband to be. So when they come together, what's that? Holy matrimony. Okay. All right. Th- yeah, now that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. From the marriage, it becomes kind of see so a wedding is the event, but the marriage is the relationship. When you get married, y'all become one. Yeah. So, but that doesn't happen right away. Becoming one is a part of the relationship. It's a part of the process. Yeah. So you'll see as we go further on into the gospels that Jesus refers to himself as the bridegroom and he refers to us, the believers in him as the bride. And then that we come together one day and we're going to be married and, 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 the, and, and become one. Right. That's why marriage is like such a beautiful thing because it's it's um it's symbolic of us as believers being the bride and 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 Jesus being the bridegroom and us becoming one. Right. Um so and then he says he must increase but I must decrease. Wait, who's saying that again? This is John speaking to his disciples, right? So verse 26 says, and they came unto John and said unto him. And then 27, this is John answered and said, a man can receive nothing except it can, and I said to come, except it be given him from heaven. Uh, everything that we get, everything, even the people who are, are like, like, like the the gifts of God, 
the talents that we have, they come from heaven. It's not like just like you said, it's not us, it's all him. All right. And it says, it says, you yourselves bear witness that I said, like you was there, you heard me say, I am not Christ. I'm simply the messenger, the one that came to prepare the way for him who is coming. That that's that's what you heard me say. And so, but but then now he starts to talk about Jesus. He says, Jesus that has the bride or the church or the believers is the bridegroom. It says, but the friend of the bridegroom, like the groom's men, right? You know, the guys who stand to the to the to the side of the, the groom. Yeah. It says the groom's men or the friend which stands and hears him rejoice greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This my joy therefore is fulfilled. So I, John is saying, trying to make it nice and simple for you. Rabbi, let's say, let's say you're a teacher, right? And I'm one of your disciples. How about your Ezra? This, this dude over here baptizing people in Jordan like you did. And a whole bunch of people are coming to him. What's up with that? And this is your response. Listen, the gift that I have did not come from me. I cannot take credit for this gift. I cannot take any, it's, it's, it's not me. The reason why I have this YouTube channel, the reason why I'm able to talk to people about Jesus, the reason why I'm bold enough, brave enough to speak about my belief outwardly is because of the spirit working on the inside of me. It's because of the gift that God has given me. You heard me say, like, it's, it's, it's not, this is, verse 20, this is verse 28 now. You heard me say, this is not me. This is not my doing. This is all because of God, right? God, God is, now, now he transitions into a wedding now, like the wedding talk, um, verse 29. This is not, it's like, this is bigger than me. Like, 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 I'm just like one of the groomsmen on the side, but Jesus is the groom. He's the, he's the, he's the man of the hour. And, and the groomsmen, I mean, and the bride, the bride is us. We're the we're the ones he's getting married to. We're the we're the ones that the union has happened with. And just and just to hear his voice, just to see him. Because all these years I was talking about him coming. And here he is. And just to hear his voice, it fills me with great joy. I, he's so much bigger than I am. I'm just a little guy on on on, on the totem pole. I'm just a small guy, just a messenger. Like he must be lifted up. He has to be lifted up. Not me. Let me come down here. Let me stay down here. Let me stay low. Let me stay humble. That's that's what he's saying. He just wanna set the record straight. That he's not taking credit for any of the stuff that he's doing. It has nothing to do with him. He's simply being obedient to God because it has been impressed upon his heart to go out and baptize people and tell them to prepare themselves for the coming of Christ. He must increase, but I must decrease. Jesus must get the glory, and I must stay low. Jesus must be exalted, but I must stay low. Jesus, you take over. And let me just stay back here, and you, you know, you just tell me what you need me to do. I do it. You know, I, listen, I clean the church. I, 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 just, I share the word on the corners. I, I pass out tracks. I, I, I put this YouTube channel together. I share your word. I, Whatever you need me to do, I'm not going to take credit. I'm not going to puff up my chest. I'm not going to boast and act like this came from me. I'm not going to take credit. You increase, and I'll decrease. Got me? Yeah. First 30, I, I understand that. Like, I, like, that wasn't something that I was guessing. Like, I know, I know what the, I know what the 30 was trying to say. I just want to put it all together, but that's pretty much John's quick speech, right? That's what he's saying to, to his disciples, the people who follow him. Mm-hmm. And so, um, verse 31, he that comes from above is above all. 
he that is of the earth is earthly and speaketh of the earth. He that come from heaven is above all. And what he hath seen and heard that he testifies and no man receive his testimony. Who is he talking about? Who is he? Um, Jesus. Mm -hmm. All right. And verse 33 says, he that has received his testimony has set his seal that God is true. So he's comparing people who listen to what God has said in verse 32. I mean, listen, who did not listen to what God has said in verse 32 and the people who have listened to, who have heard the message of God and listened to him in verse 33, right? They are sealed. You receive the message of Christ in your heart and you accept him as your Lord and Savior. You are sealed until the day of his coming, right? And it says for verse 34, it says, For he whom God hath sent speaks the words of God, for God give not the Spirit by measure unto him. The Father loves the Son and has given all things into his hand. So verse 34 says, For he whom God, or for Jesus whom God has sent, speaks the words of God, for God did not give him a Spirit by measure unto him. So everything that Jesus speaks, everything that Jesus does comes from God, right? This is the father loves the son and he had given all things into his hands. So father God gave everything to Jesus, you know, God, the son, Jesus it says, hey, go on earth. I'm giving you all power. I'm, living, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you everything I need you to do. Hey, here's the package. Here's the job. Go get it done for me. Um, and then verse 36 says, he that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. So people think that people think that if How do I explain that? Everlasting life, right? So, so I, I have a friend. Um, I grew up playing basketball with, and and just like he he'll get on social media and he'll just like you know give people like an encouraging, uplifting, quick message. Oh, good morning, y'all! It's a beautiful day out. You know what I mean? Be you know, be have a blessed day, and you know, just you know, thank God for such a, seeing another day, and and then you know, it's just like it's cool to say that, but the question is, are you living it? Right? It's one thing to hear the word of God and say, "Oh, wow, that was pretty good," but it's another thing to say, "Oh, that was a pretty good." Now let me go listen. Let me do exactly what he wants me to do. Let me be obedient to God. So when you hit, when it says, when you receive this message, like believing is one thing, bro, but living this life is a whole nother ball game. It's a whole nother ball game. And, and, and Jesus is clearly stating that, that should you decide to live this life and be in, live in obedience unto me, and you'll have everlasting life. And for some people, they don't, they're not able to comprehend that. Like they think that this is it. They're gonna live their lives on earth, do whatever they have to do, and after, that's it, they return back to the ground, and that's it. But those, who, those of us who do believe, they'll have everlasting life. So one thing I want you to jot down, and you'll see as we continue on, is about this bridegroom and the bride talk. I want you to just write that down. Jesus is the bridegroom, and the church is the bride. I was writing down the stuff about John, because I wrote down that John humbled himself before Jesus, and John didn't call himself Jesus, and he kept telling people that he wasn't Jesus. Yeah. All right. I'll write down that.
I wonder if John knew that Jesus was his cousin. Wait, I think I know that. Yeah, I think I know that. Uh, no, I'm saying I wonder if John knew that, that Jesus was his cousin. And remember when, um, oh, did we read that? Oh, I wonder if we read that. Did we speak about the, the cousin thing yet? No, right? Mm -mm. Uh, if, uh, uh, did you did you take note of how many disciples Jesus has followed him just yet? No, I did not. Verse, I mean, chapter one, verse one. How many disciples does Jesus have right now? All right. I'm not through my notes if I wrote down anything about that, but I didn't. Okay. So right, right in that from chapter one, um, verse 40. I don't know if you have here. Yeah, just turn, turn there real quick. <clears throat> so starting with verse 35 of chapter one, it says, again, the next day after John stood, and two of his disciples. And looking upon Jesus as he walked, he saith, Behold the Lamb of God. Um, you remember why we, we spoke about the Lamb of God, right? You remember that part? Yeah. It says, and, the, and the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. And then Jesus turned and saw them following, and saith unto them, what, what are you looking for? And they said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, be interpreted, Master, where where dwellest thou? Where do you live? And he said unto them, Come and see. They came and saw where he dwelt and abode with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. Um, one of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first find, findeth his own brother, Simon, and said unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted to Christ. So the first person was Andrew. Andrew went and told his brother, Simon, or Simon Peter. We, we know him as Peter, all right? Peter's going to be huge. You know, he, got a book, he got a whole book name after him. Yeah, P Peter's going to be huge, right? Um, Peter's going to start the church. Peter's going to be one of the most talkative of the 12. Um, you're going to see that he's like, Peter has a bit of an attitude problem and he's like, he's like, he thinks he's like, he has to be God. Jesus is um, bodyguard. He cuts, he cuts a dude's ear off that try to press Jesus. Like, <laughs> wait, wait, he understand. <laughs> how is he, not, how is he not comprehending like, Nobody can't do nothing to Jesus unless God allows it. And see, I think that I think that just goes right back to what we just was speaking about in chapter three. That like God is is in control. Like like and and it's so crazy because as much time. So Peter got to spend you know approximately three years with Jesus while he was on the, while he's on the earth. <clears throat> Day in and day out, you would think that Peter would understand the power of God. But I, I don't think, I, as a human being, you can quite fully understand everything there is about God because that, that's what makes him God. That's what differentiates us from him. That's what separates us from him, right? Like, he's he's higher than us, right? He's bigger than we are. Like, and right, like you'll, you'll read, like, right after Peter cuts the guy's ear off, Jesus is like, you know what? I'm sorry for my friend. Sometimes he be bugging out. And he touched the guy here and looked at back. <laughs> I remember that story. Yeah. So, so you got Andrew and his brother Peter. Um, let's see what else we have. So that's two. Yeah, verse 42. He says, and he brought him to Jesus, right? So Andrew brought Peter to Jesus. And when Jesus be, you know, beheld him, he said, you are Simon the son of Jonah, thou shalt be called Cephas, which is being by interpretation a stone, right? Or a rock. 
the, that day following, Jesus would go forth into Galilee and find Philip and say unto him, follow me. So we got three. Andrew, Simon Peter, a.k.a. Cephas, a.k.a. a stone, a.k.a. a rock. Um, we got Philip. And now Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip finding Nathaniel. So now you got Nathaniel. So that's what that's for, right? Yeah. Andrew, his brother Peter, Philip. Uh, Philip found Nathaniel. It says, we have found of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And then Daniel said unto him, can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Remember we spoke about that? Like, can anything come out of East New York or Brownsville? And Philip said unto him, come and see. Jesus saw Nathaniel coming to him and said unto him, behold, an Israel indeed, Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. Nathaniel said unto him, where do you know me from? And Jesus answered and said unto him, before that Philip came, called thee, when thou was under the fig tree, I saw thee. And they answered and said unto him, Rabbi, thou art the son of God. Thou art the king of Israel. Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou? Thou shalt see greater things than these. And he said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter ye shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. So, so far we have four disciples. All right. Mm -hmm. But yeah, to go back to my original search, we didn't get to the part where. Yeah, we didn't get to that part. Yeah, we didn't. We didn't, we didn't, we didn't do that, that John was Jesus' cousin, um, but I, I, I just so happened to stumble upon the disciple thing. I don't think you took a note of that, so I just wanted to highlight that. But um, yeah, yeah, that's pretty. Much. Imagine Jesus here cut. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, Jesus would definitely be annoyed by me if he was my cousin. Or oh, your brother, bro. Your brother, like, like, cause he has siblings too. So, Whew. as yeah. brother, and you just don't pay him any attention. Like, like, look, like, like, how much time do you really spend with your older brother? Nah, nah I'm talking older than 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 Eon, like the oldest one. Oh, him. Whenever I see him. Exactly. Jesus is out here making moves, and you just like whenever I see him, whenever he come back home to go to sleep, <laughs> that's when I'm see him. So it's like you you don't know, like, because I I used to always say to myself like, like how could these people not believe in Jesus? Like he's right in front of them. Like, like it's different from us. Like we we gotta rely on the spirit and the connection, and yeah. Jesus right there, you could touch him. But then I'm like, you know what? You never know because you don't know how you would, would respond in that situation. You don't know if you would be like one of the disciples or if you would be, you know, or you'd be like the Pharisees who's like, oh, no, this this is not the rabbi. This is not the Messiah. Like, he, who is he? You know? You might you might try to test him like, like Nicodemus. Yeah, he was testing all the way. <laughs> all right. So um, let's pray out and I'll let you do your, um, your outro. Right. Father in heaven, we thank you for this hour, for this time, for even now allowing us to see this day that you have made, keeping us through the night and allowing the breath of life to flow through us. Father, we wake early, Lord God, to seek your face to know more of you and that our relationship with you will become more and more intimate. Father, we thank you for revealing the things that you have revealed unto us. Holy Spirit, for giving us the illumination of the scripture, understanding knowledge and wisdom from this reading. Thank you for reminding us, Lord God, that we must decrease so that you can increase. That we ought not to take any credit for any gifting that you have given us, Lord God but we ought to remember the purpose of you releasing the gifts unto us so that we can go out and do the things that will give your name the glory. 
and as a byproduct of it, that we, Lord God, would be blessed to see others being blessed because of you. Father, we thank you for the great example that you've shown us thus far and what we've read, how John was a leader, how John was obedient, how John remained humble. Father, help us to do just the same. Help us to be reminded that we ought to live in obedience unto your word. We look forward, Lord God, with great expectation of what you're going to reveal to us in the chapters to come. We pray that your hand, your grace, and your mercy would keep us until then, Lord God, that we continue to journey through this Bible, Father God. I pray that your light would shine through us today, Lord God, that those who we encounter would see you in us working through us so that they too, Lord God, would want to get to know you, that they too would become curious of this lifestyle that we've chosen to live. Father, I pray again that you would be glorified and that my brother and I would be edified by the presence of your Holy Spirit living on the inside of us. I thank you for my brother. I thank you for his drive. I thank you for his zeal. I thank you for his efforts and, and, and his, his, his wantingness to, to get closer to you, Lord God. I pray that he continues to encourage me as I continue to encourage him and that we continue to be as knives, Lord God, sharpening in each other, Lord God. Thank you for this relationship. May you continue to build it up, Lord God. May you continue to do the work that you have set out for it to do, Lord God. If you need us to use us, Lord God, to reach the world, to reach the masses with your word, Lord God, then simply have your way. Have your way, Father God. I pray a special blessing over my brother, Lord God, and his household, Lord God. I pray even now that because of this, that his entire family will be one unto Christ and all become believers in you, Lord God, and that they would sit and rest and abide in your presence until you come back to bring us back into eternal life. I thank you. I glorify you. And I pray even now that you continue to pour into him. May your Holy Spirit rest and abide in him, Lord God. Let him see things that he'd never seen before. Give him prophecy, Lord God. Give him the ability to touch and heal, Lord God. Give him the ability to speak to things, Lord God, and let them become life, Lord God. Pour out on my brother, Lord God. Continue to build him up in his spiritual maturity. Let him be an example unto his peers and wherever he may go, Lord God, unto his family members, Lord God. Make him, Lord God, the example. I thank you. We bless your name. We give you honor and we give you glory. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. This is the end of the video, um, guys. We'll be back next week with um, John chapter 4. Either going over the half of it or the full chapter. We'll decide next week. And uh, I pray that as we go along this journey, just come along with us. Have your book aside. You have your Bible. Right? Jot down your notes. Highlight key information. And just continue to learn with us. Hope you guys enjoy this video. If you like it, um, make sure you subscribe, share it, and keep on coming back because we'll do this every single Saturday. Please uh, like, subscribe, peace. <music>